Hi guys, thanks for stopping by the Pizza Garage. You know, I often get questions and emails that ask me questions about roll cages in cars. Now, I do roll cage installations and fabrications for race cars, and what I'd like to do is help you out a little bit if you're going to either install a roll cage in your car or you're going to buy a car with a roll cage installed. Most of my work, most of the work I do besides installing roll cages is repairing or fixing roll cages so that they'll pass the NHRA technical inspections. Now this is a 1970 Super B with a 440 in it and this motor is really stout. I'll start it up for you a little later on in the video. But this car was purchased in Iowa somewhere near Nebraska. A friend of mine bought it, drove down there and picked it up. And as you can see, it has the NHRA Extended Technical Inspection with a serial number on it. And when he brought the car back to New York and went to race it at the racetrack, he found out the, the inspector at the track would not let him race it because the cage was not installed to code. So I questioned, well, how did he get the sticker if the cage wasn't installed correctly? Well, who knows what was going on at the track where it was being raced. Now, if you're going to do this and you're going to go buy a car, I highly recommend that you get a copy of the NHRA inspection standards for roll cages. There's different, different standards for cages, different kind of cages, whether you're going to have a cage in a dirt track car, a race car, drag car, but it's very, very specific about what you have to have in your car and how the cage needs to be installed so it'll pass technical inspection. Now let me show you real quick what needs to be done to this roll cage and why it's important to make sure it's installed correctly. Now the first thing you need to check out or look at when you're installing a roll cage, number one is where the seat's going to be positioned. And the seat really needs to be securely mounted to the floor. As you can see the seat was taken out and I welded in, I welded up this frame for the seat, put it in place and I bolted the seat to the frame. And as, as you can see the seat is very secure. There's absolutely going nowhere. That seat is firmly bolted to the floor, number one. Number two, it is in position. I had the guy who owns the car to sit in the car because where the driver sits and comes straight up here has a lot to do with where the cage needs to be located, the driver's head. Where is the driver's head located and how high is it from the top of the roll cage as it goes across in the back bar, okay? Those are the most important things you need to be aware of. Well, actually for this project right here. So what the problem is, this roll cage was installed and this member right here, this is actually supposed to go forward about six or eight inches. But if he did that, he'd have to put it through the dashboard, cut through the dash, go all the way down on the side, and go to the frame. This person chose to mount it where it is because he wanted to take this car and eventually turn it back into a regular street car. The, the, uh, what he did was he have a thousand dollar dashboard and a whole bunch of metal. He'd have to completely ruin this car, so he tried to do that. The result was this. When the seat is in position, as it is right now, the code says that the this upper bar here, this back part of the cage, back the back hoop, has to be no more than six inches behind the driver's head. So if I look at this, and even if I took this cage, this hoop right here, and moved it up, I got to move it about eight inches so that when the driver is sitting here, I get about six inches between the back of the helmet and the top of the hoop. That's number one. Number two, the back of the seat. The back of the seat needs to be bolted to this member right here, and you can see how far it is. It's got to be moved up a good, I'm going to say, eight, eight, ten inches. So what I need to do here is I need to come inside here. I need to cut the cage off the bottom. I need to cut this, this uh, member that goes across the door. And this needs to come up higher because this, this bar needs to pass in, in between the, the right by the driver's uh, elbow, above the driver's elbow. So this is the angle of this, but this bar has to change. And then I'll get in here and then I got to cut. I have to cut this top member off. And I have to take this hoop, this back hoop here, and I have to move this forward a good six inches. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to cut that out of there. I'm going to try and save as much as the metal I can. I already have a couple of them sort of cut loose, but I'm going to cut those out of there and then I'm going to uh, take that hoop out and I'll show you where that's going to be located and what I need to do to get that welded in properly. So I have the hoop cut out and now all I have to do is trim off all of the pipes where I cut them off. I used, a, I used a couple things. I used a plasma cutter to get around some of it and I used a sawzall to cut some of it, trying to protect the interior as much as possible. There is a nice headliner in there. I didn't want to ruin it. Now, I'm not going to go through the fabrication welding back in because that would be a whole new video about welding. But I can to give you some hints and some ideas about what you need to do when you need to weld something. Now when I pulled this out, as I suspected, this was MIG welded. It wasn't TIG welded, it was MIG welded. And here's a telltale sign. you got a MIG welding wire hanging out behind the, the weld here where you wouldn't see it above the, above the roll, pot, roll bar where it went in by that roof. You wouldn't see this. But there, so this was all MIG welded. Now, the, the uh, rules state that any kind of, this is chrome molly tube, any chrome molly tubing must be TIG welded. 
okay? You might get away with a MIG welder if you have somebody who's really, really good at it, but if the judge or the guy inspecting the car wants to be really, really picky, he can uh, not qualify the car or not give you a safety, um, pass the safety test because of the MIG welds. Must be TIG welded. So I'm going to TIG weld this in. It's going to take quite some time, so I'm not going to go through that right now. So those are the basic things about roll cages and uh, uh, roll bars and cages you want to remember when you're buying a car or installing one. Plan it out. Make sure you know the rules. Make sure you know the requirements before you weld it in so that you're putting it in right. Because I'll tell you, it took a couple hours to get this, this out of here, and it's going to take a good maybe 8-10 hours to put it back in and weld it. You don't want to have to go through that again. So do it right the first time. Now, before I end this video, uh, people are always asking me to start up cars when I build them, start up the engines. So I'm going to start the engine on this car because it is, it is pretty radical. Uh, it's a racing engine. Let me show you the engine. I'll tell you a little bit about the engine and we'll start it up. So what we have here is your basic 440 big block. It's been bored 30 over. It's running flat top pistons with, uh, at 11 to 1 compression on 110 octane. Uh, the crank is a forged crank. Uh, we got uh, MSD ignition, high energy ignition, uh, high energy distributor. We have the uh, high energy distributor and high energy alternator. The, uh, the uh, electric water pump backup with the uh, um, uh, electric cooling fan for the radiator. Uh, it's running a 950 dominator uh, carburetor with a ported matched and po uh, polished intake manifold. Uh, there's a fuel regulator on the outside, but you can't see that. Um, and, and the huge return spring on here. Uh, for drag racing and this thing is built strictly for racing the big headers big tube headers uh, and and the big cam and I'm gonna start it up and this is designed for two things first of all you're gonna notice how ru uh, rough it runs and it's extremely loud so I'm gonna explain it now because I won't be able to talk while it's running because it is so loud so what I'm gonna do is uh, start it up and you'll hear it idle it'll start to idle right away and you'll hear the radical the cam it's a 600 lift cam it's a roller cam and it's designed, uh, it's got a 400 stall converter in the transmission, and it uh, shifts at 6300. So what you'll hear is I'm going I'm to show you the throttle response, the fast throttle response, because the, the uh, size of the pistons and the, and the compression, it's all just built for racing. So it has a very thr fast throttle response, but it's built for high end, higher end torque, around 4,500, 5,000 when it's ready to take off. So I'll start it up, I'll let it idle, then I'll show you the throttle response, and then I'll, eat, I'll, I'll go up through the RPM range and I'll sort of bring it up and you'll hear how it smooths out when it gets at the, towards the top. At the top it really runs smooth at higher RPMs uh, because of the way the cam and the way it's all set up. Let me see if I can get this baby started. Gonna turn the power on, electricity, electric fuel pumps, As you can see, that runs awesome. You get up to the higher, higher RPMs and it runs incredible. Great engine, runs great. This car goes on the track straight as a rail and it, and it runs, it just, this runs great. It is a race car through and through and it's just awesome. Really is. Beautiful car. Beautiful car. Let me show you a picture. Here, I'll take this off of the, back this up. I'll tell you, for a 1970 Super B race car, 
this is this car is a gorgeous condition you can look down you can see for a black car it's extremely straight you look down the whole car I'll tell you it is beautiful it's unbelievable it's a race car to tell you the truth I think it's awesome really is nice great paint job quarters are gorgeous it's dusty now because it's been sitting here I've been working and welding and grinding so you can see how dusty it is but uh, got the fiberglass deck lid on the, on the back, cut save weight, the big Hoosiers, and uh, 473 gears in the back. And this is what it looks like inside. Ready to race. The carpeting's out right now because uh, there is carpeting, but the carpeting's out just so I could do the welding. I get the roll cage back in. And what the car looks like all the way around. But I'll tell you, this is, this is an awesome car. Awesome car. So there you have it. A little bit about roll cages, roll bars installation, a little bit about the NHRA standards and the, and the uh, specifications for welding in roll bars, what you need to look for when you're buying a race car, if you're buying a car with a cage in it, or you're going to put your own cage in it, make sure you plan in advance. Also a little bit about the engines, racing engines, drag racing engines, very different than regular engines, uh, street engines, performance engines, blower engines, they're all different. I love working on them all. And this, I'll tell you what, this is this is a real fun engine to work on. I'm gonna pull it out this winter, do a little more work on it, make it run a little bit better. Although it runs incredible right now, it's hard to make it better. But there is a few things we can do to tweak it. Maybe I'll make a video about that. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Comments, uh, suggestions. If you work on roll cages, you can help us out. Help everybody out and share what you know. It's all about sharing what you know. We're all here to enjoy and learn information. Um, I hope you like this video. I tell you, I really love working on this car. It's gorgeous, and I love working on this engine starting it up. It really gets your heart pumping, I'll tell you. This is an awesome car. Runs awesome. I, and I appreciate you guys, uh, all the input and questions, comments, texts. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And I really appreciate you stopping by Pete's Garage.